Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackEd, and this is a digital rebar training video to show you how to run Ansible in digital rebar. And there are many ways to run Ansible in digital rebar. This video is about how to use our Ansible local runner, meaning that digital rebar agent, what we call a runner, is going to run Ansible as a local play. Um, it doesn't pull it, it doesn't mean it doesn't SSH, it just runs it from the machine itself. This is super handy and fast if you want to use Ansible, but just run the work on the machine without having to set up SSH keys or anything like that. Let me show you the basics on how to get started with this, and then we'll talk about the different options. Uh, many people want to do this with GitHub, and that is perfectly normal. That's where they store their playbooks. In this, I'm not using GitHub. I'm going to be showing you the Ansible template, the template way to build this. Uh, and this is a good starting point for you just to practice and get running. So here, what I have is I have a very simple digital rebar system, and I'm going to create a machine to run my Ansible work. In this case, I don't even actually need a real machine. I can use an Ansible context. So this is Ansible running in a container. Uh, it's already pre-installed as everything I need, and I'm just going to go ahead and do a discover base on this system to make sure it looks good. I don't need any additional information, and that is, is it. So now I have my system. Uh, it can run simple tasks. I could run workloads and things like that in the context. Uh, super handy way to sort of do this test run and, and get things going, because I don't have to have a dedicated machine just to test an Ansible playbook but this container has Ansible already installed, so that looks great. The goal here is that we want to be able to run a simple playbook, uh, and we have one predefined. I'll show you that in just a moment. The first thing I need is to build a workflow to take advantage of this system. Um, I've built one. I'm going to go ahead and build it from scratch to show you what that would look like. Uh, we're going to call it Ansible Training. And the reason we don't have a specified workflow flow for this is because it's designed to be part of a larger workflow that you might build. So the Ansible Playbook's local stage is something that you would add into a broader sequence of operations. In this case, we're just doing training, so I'm just doing that one Ansible Playbook's local stage. That looks good. It's been added to the system. And if I want to go ahead the nice thing about the defaults on this is I can go ahead, I can run it without making any other changes, and it should produce a reliable result. Uh, I am using 4.7 or 4.6 here, so I get the debug view. We will show you what that looks like. It's, it's very handy uh, for playing around with this type of, of environment. And this is the playbook run for Ansible Local. If you're using an older system, um, this is the normal job log and what it would look like. So I'm going to go back and stay in the new view. And what you'll see here is that uh, we have our playbook run. That playbook run shows me um, a sample. This is from a, a pre-wired template that we're going to clone and, and play with. It passes in digital rebars machine definition automatically. That looks great and it can come through. This is all the properties of the machine. That's fantastic. Finishes the play and then exits, exits the system. All of this is driven from this Ansible playbook task. So let's look at this, at this system. Here's the Ansible playbooks stage. The task itself relies on a variable called Ansible playbooks and we're going, to explore, we're going to play with that a bit. Fundamentally, what the Ansible Playbooks does is it goes and retrieves information out of the system, builds the playbook that you have defined, creates a set of parameters that gets passed in. This is where that digital rebar comes in. That's going to come in every single time. There's an option to extend it, and I'll show you how to do that. And then it just runs the Ansible Playbook with localhost defined. So pretty straightforward. It's just making it easy for you to, to take these steps. Uh, and there is documentation built into the system so that you can see what's going on. The more interesting documentation here is actually on the parameter. Let's see, whoops, params. We want to see the Ansible playbook, uh, look, Ansible playbooks 
variable here. And here you can actually consult the documentation to see what uh, your options are and, and how things go. And we try to keep this up to date. Um, you, what, what happens by default is we're going to be running this Ansible Playbooks test playbook YAML template. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this, this JSON data and add it into the machine that we're playing with. So I'll go in here. This is the machine. If I hit edit, I can add the parameter Ansible playbooks. That looks great. And I can just paste in. Now, normally in a bigger system, I would do this as part of a profile. So it's shared by multiple machines. Uh, for this demo, we're, we're really focused on this, making this one machine work so that you can then do expansion. Uh, and I am not worried about pulling the playbooks from a location, which I could do. I literally just want to be able to come in and say, let's build this test playbook. This is the one that's predefined and make that run. So here, what I've done is I've overridden the uh, defaults with my own custom value for this. I'm going to hit save. So now I've added this Ansible Playbooks uh, run. If I come up, I can reset that workflow and rerun it. And you'll see I get exactly the same result, which is what you would expect because I, I didn't make any changes. I just overrode the default value. The next thing for me to do is actually change what that playbook, that template is. So I'm going to go over to my templates and I'm going to find my Ansible Playbooks uh, template. Let's see. I'm going to search for it this way. This is that Ansible Playbooks test playbook. If I look at this, this is the play that we've been running. So here's the task that I have. It just gives me a debug message. There is a uh, showing the access to the local systems and then that digital rebar install. And what I want to do is I want to take this playbook. I'm going to use this as my basis. And I'm going to clone it. And we are going to call it Ansible Training. I don't have to have the yaml.temple, but it's nice. And what I want to do here is I want to add in a variable. So now I, now I can do whatever I want. I could remove bits and pieces. I could explore the digital rebar information that I have available. Uh, what I want to do instead is grab a variable foo. So this might be something that we've defined on the system that we then want to retrieve out of, out of the digital rebar system and inject it into my Ansible playbook. So the idea here is you've written Ansible playbooks. They do a whole bunch of stuff. You need a secret. You need something special. That's exactly what we're going to be doing in this case. Um, and we'll, we'll call that variable foo and add it in. So we have two things that we need to keep track of in this case. One is we're adding a new variable and then we've defined this template. So the first thing I want to do is show that this template actually works. Back over to our machine. In our machine variables, I have to say, you know, don't use this default template, but use the one that we just defined. That looks great. Save that. Come over to debug, reset this workflow. And now when I go through this process, what you'll see is it's trying to build, um, let's, we should have it. This is the digital rebar one. Here is my special foo. And it's giving me a big warning. That variable is not defined, which is exactly what we expect because we haven't done anything to define that variable. So to make that work, we have a little bit of work to do. What we need to do is define this extra playbook. Uh, and that is the extra vars variable here. And then we need to define a, a template that we'll call that. If we define this but don't have the template, then the system <laughs> will fail because that template isn't going to be found. So I, I do need to give it a Ansible-training uh, TMPL. That looks great. So we're going to create a brand new template for this. I need the comma. Still, that must be valid JSON. 
I'm not even going to bother running this because I know that it would cause a template expansion error. Let's just jump over to the templates page and then add a new template. Uh, we have to call it that. And in this case, we're just doing a snippet of that um, bigger JSON block. So I can just say foo and define foo as bar. If I had multiples, if I had bar and foo, I would need JSON snippet, need a comma. Commas are important. I'm going to go ahead and save this and, and see what happens. Uh, should, spaces aren't really relevant here, so because we're talking JSON, not YAML. And uh, that is looking pretty good. If we go back to our machines again, into our task, and rerun it, now it's pulling in that template for us. And at the very end, it's now found foo and bar and resolved those, figured out what they should be. I'm going to jump over into the job and show you what that, this looks like. Um, I'm showing you the run log. The other thing to note here, and that's interesting to look at, is the template rendering information. This is short-term data. This isn't persisted, but since I'm, I just ran it, it is available. I can go in and see everything that, that got run. Um, so this is the playbook that we're, we're building. And down below that, we should actually find our, here's our extra virus statement. And in this case, this is what gets run as part of the template. So digital rebar is running the DRP CLI to pull in the machines data. And then here are the template that we asked to be expanded, foo and bar. It's just a digital rebar template and I can inject that data, which is really handy. So at this point now I've been able, this is just a static file. I've basically added additional inventory, but I didn't do any variable expansion. And what I'd really like to be able to do is do some variable expansion. So to make that interesting, I'm going to go ahead and define, say my AWS uh, secret. I'm going to put it in the system. Notice this is an encrypted parameter. So in digital rebar is stored in a secure way. And I can type whatever I want in this, in this variable and save it. This is now data that is in the system. Now, of course, this doesn't have to be on the machine. It could be in a profile. It could be globally. It could be really any information that I have available. And since it's sensitive information, I, I certainly don't want to check it into Git. I want it injected into my system. It could be, you know, the, what rack I'm in, what, what, time zone, what uh, system to query, if it's a local system or there's specialized data center information that you want injected in these playbooks. This is a really super easy way to make sure that shows up and not have to put a whole bunch of conditional logic into your playbooks. So to make this show up, I have to go back into this Ansible training uh, template. I'm doing this on the UX. It's important to note, do this as infrastructure as code. The system is really, really easy for you to add these templates and upload them as part of a CLI experience. Um, that's how I normally do the editing. I want to show it to you all here because that just sort of makes it a more coherent story. You don't have to leave the product UX to, to play and test. Um, so I come over here. Here's my Ansible template training. And if I want foo to be resolved as that parameter, I have to be able to edit it. And then I need to go in and do my param expansion. Uh, let's see. And here I need to know the name of the parameter, of course. And it should be AWS. Uh, open up a oops, that's not what I meant to do. AWS secret key. So much for being able to remember these things short term. There we go. Let's go back to my template. Ansible training. Edit. Lost my edits. That's no problem. So when I do a variable expansion here, it's going to automatically decrypt it. That's part of what the expansion is going to do for us. And this is a Golang template expansion. We have an exhaustive list. You can do math, uh, string lookups, all sorts of manipulation on, on digital rebar data, including parse JSON out of it. 
This is the power, one of the secret powers that Digital Rebar has behind the scenes, and you can inject it into your Ansible. Um, if you want to do Ansible variables, you have to protect them in strings. There's a, a knowledge base article about exactly how to do this, but this will then take that AWS secret key, now that it's in my contents, jump back to the machine, go to the debug view, rerun it, and here what's happening is it's rendering that template, it's looking up the value on the machine that I typed in my secret, and it's rendering it into the Ansible playbook in a decrypted way. Uh, and I typed whatever I wanted as the secret for this item. Whew. So to recap, this is a stage that you can add into any workflow that can be used to take existing Ansible playbooks that run locally on the system, inject digital rebar data into those playbooks, including anything in the system, including secrets, and then run them as part of a variable defined on the, on it, on the uh, machine profile or globally. Uh, it's important to also note that these are, this is an array. It's not just one playbook. So if I have three or four playbooks, I want to run back to back, uh, that, is accommodated in here and you can just loop over each one of those playbooks and, and make them all go. If you want to define them as templates, uh, there's a pattern uh, I showed you for doing that. If you want to do it as GitHub uh, and pull down those playbooks, uh, that is also baked into this system. Um, we're always looking for improvements and enhancements, so I would love to know what you think. If this is working for you, if you need something extra, um, the playbook, uh, the variable insertion piece came because somebody in the community asked and it was a really easy add and a really powerful extension. So, uh, and once again, this, this makes digital rebar incredibly extensible for your use cases. Uh, and we're looking forward to hearing how you've used it. This is Rob Hirschfeld. I hope this training has been helpful. Thanks a lot.